Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at attaching an iOmega zip drive to the Wii U. Now stick around for the whole video because at the end I'll have an encore with the zip drive's big brother. So I've done a couple of videos recently with the Wii U where I have formatted DVD-RAM and a RAID 5 array and used it to copy games onto it. If you've watched those videos, you're probably wondering, well, they're more sophisticated devices and more sophisticated media than a zip drive, so if they worked, why wouldn't the zip drive? And on a surface level, you'd be correct. But what we're really going to look at today is capacity. The zip disks are only 100 megabytes. And if you look at the contemporaries of the Wii U, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, they have minimum requirements for their external storage that is massively higher than an iOmega zip disk. The PlayStation 4 is 250 gigabytes minimum, and the Xbox One is either 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes. Microsoft's website is contradictory on this, sometimes in the same article. But either way, much, much larger than a zip disk. So I don't even know if this is going to work. I mean, after all, even the DVD RAM was 4.7 gigabytes in size. That's quite a bit bigger as well. So let's put in a zip disk and see if we can format it. Okay, I'm already in the settings area here for data management, so let's go in and see if we can format it. It recognized the drive, that's good. Hey, it looks good. And there it is with 78 megabytes available. So the formatting of the disk by the Wii U's proprietary encrypted file system gobbles up quite a bit, much larger than formatting a disk in FAT32 or HFS+. We lost 22 megabytes there, or 22% of the disk. So what kind of games can we fit on a disk that only has 78 megabytes? We'll go into my system memory here. So, Shakedown Hawaii will work. That's the game I used in the DVD RAM video. It's only 62 megabytes. There are a few games in the eShop that will fit, not very many, but Shakedown Hawaii is the only one with a retail release. And that would allow you to do something cool like, with some minimal cropping, design cover art for it. But I already did that one. What else have we got? Well, there are quite a few virtual console games that will fit on these zip disks. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, DS, etc. And if you've ever messed around with the ROM files in these old games, you know they're very, very tiny. But in the eShop, when you download them, they're quite a bit bigger. That's because each ROM is encapsulated in its own custom emulator. So they're 50, 60, 70 megabytes on the download. In this case, I have Metroid Fusion, which is actually pretty small. It's only 47 megabytes. So let's move that over to the zip disk and then see if we can play the game from the zip disk. And here we go. Okay, so that was just over one minute.
And now we'll attempt to run the game from the zip disk. Okay. Okay, so about 40 seconds to be able to interact with the game. And we're in. Okay, let's shut that down. Okay, so if you want to put multiple games on multiple zip disks, there's a specific order you have to do in order to change them out. The Wii U knows nothing about removable media over USB, so if you just eject the disk and put another one in, it's not going to refresh the home screen and you'll get the new game icon. And also, if you think that you can go into the settings or the eShop and then swap disks and then go back to the home screen, it will refresh, it will not. It will actually get corrupted and cause all kinds of problems. The only way to properly switch out zip disks or any other removal media over USB that you would put on here is you're going to have to turn off the Wii U, eject the disk, put the new one in, and then turn the Wii U console back on. That will work. So one cool thing about Game Boy Advance games and DS games is that their original packaging was pretty much square, not too dissimilar from a zip drive uh, jewel case. So with just some minimal tweaking, you can get the cover art for them and put it in and it works just great. Spine, the back, works out pretty well. So if you've stuck with me this long, you might be curious about what the minimum size is to format a disc on the Wii U. So I have these two old compact flash cards, 16 megabytes and 32 megabytes. The Wii U will format the 32 megabyte compact flash card, it will not format the 16 megabyte one. This uses up 19 megabytes in the format, leaving you with only 13 megabytes, which of course is completely useless to put any software on it and that 19 megabytes is gobbling up would explain why the 16 is not working. In all reality, the smallest disk that you're going to be able to get and actually use to put games on is going to be an IOMEGA zip disk at 100 megabytes and about 78 available after the format. Okay, so let's move on to the zip drive's big brother. Okay, and we're back. The device on the right is the iOmega Jazz Drive. This was a high-end option offered by iOmega. And unlike the zip disk, which used a floppy type material, the Jazz Disk actually had hard drive platters in them, and they were substantially faster. This has a SCSI 2 port on the back of it, and they never even made a USB one because at the time it would have been USB 1.1 and it would have killed most of the reason for having a Jazz Drive. This was geared towards professional users, uh, Mac users because they already had SCSI ports or PC users that had installed a SCSI card. So I'll go ahead and put in the two discs here. This is the one with Metroid Fusion on it on the zip disc. 
And if you're wondering how I have this SCSI drive hooked up to the Wii U, well, I have a SCSI to USB adapter, but it unfortunately drops it down to USB 1.1 speeds. All right, there's both of them. So let's go into device two. That's what the zip disk is. And there's Metroid Fusion. So let's move it over to the jazz drive. And we're off. This whole process will take about two minutes. It's about twice as long as what it takes to copy the same game from the system memory to the disk or vice versa. But these two USB 1.1 devices talking to each other, it kind of just doubles the time it takes to move that data. So if you lived through the 90s and owned some of these devices, you probably never thought you'd see a game console essentially being a traffic cop and directing data around. So anyway, I'm going to leave you with this. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please like and subscribe. It does help out. I'll be back in the future, but that's all for now. Take care.